worldwide, there's one football field or one hectare of eelgrass lost every half hour. Growing eelgrass from seeds was uh, something that's never really been done before in the world. I did come up with this method to glue these seeds to clams, knowing that clams bury themselves, and then I was able to build a machine to sow in a systematic way on the, on the seafloor, a way to sow these seeds into the ground by using clams to grow an underwater meadow. So what we do is we come in and we anchor up and the divers go in, the divers drop down to the bottom and they go through the eelgrass bed and when they see a reproductive shoot, they, they pick it and it goes into a mesh bag and then they bring all the eelgrass back up here, all the reproductive shoots with the seeds on them. They go into a cooler and then one of the divers, Rob, will take these seeds to the uh, Cornell Extension Lab where they have tanks that are bubbling with seawater and he'll put all the seeds in those tanks to preserve them. In the later fall, October, November, we're gonna take hatchery clams and we're gonna glue the seeds to those hatchery clams. And then we're gonna take this boat over to Smithtown Bay and we're gonna put all these clams that are loaded with the eelgrass seeds in these chutes and they're gonna shoot off the back of the deck as the boat travels at a set speed to try and figure out how many clams can we plant per unit of time and then how much acreage or what's the unit area we can plant in a unit of time and what density of clams. This last planting we did was 10,000 and we did it in 20 minutes and we did it over two acre site. We were doing 400 foot runs. In the future we could have hundreds of these machines thousands of people helping. And we could turn the tide on the degradation and loss of eelgrass worldwide. And that would be a great achievement. There's a lot of work left to do. Um, the method's not entirely proven out yet. There's all kinds of environmental factors that we have to deal with. But we're gonna seed that area and see if they take and my understanding is the rule of thumb for a successful project is that if that bed that was planted is still established three years after the initial effort and it's starting to reproduce its own seeds and maybe expanding on its own, then you can consider success. The new generation has come into management. They're investing in sustainable industries. So they're just changing to a more steady state. How can we live on the earth, make money, and not degrade the environment? This is gonna take decades, and I'll be long dead before we reach what I would consider a, a sustainable, steady state, state on the sound. But there's been a lot of strides in the right direction, and this eelgrass project's just one small cog in that overall vision. Not a lot of people know what eelgrass is, and why we need to restore it. There's only really one last great eelgrass meadow on the Sound, and that's at Fisher's Island. So a lot of people who live on the Long Island Sound might not have even seen eelgrass in their lifetime, especially younger people. If we had more funding and more resources and more public support for this eelgrass restoration project, we can really scale it up and increase the speed and accuracy and scope uh, geographically of what we're trying to do and hopefully work to plant more eelgrass meadows in the future.